<laughs> All right, so yeah, you can see this is the one place where we can tag the base of the sorum pretty easily versus looking at a slide, okay? And then the nerve would be the nerve by the sorum. Does that make sense? Vein versus artery. What are these little loops right here that are turning, going from red to blue? Capillaries. Capillaries, right? And notice here, there's almost like a little shunt happening. It's going directly from the artery to a vein. What is that called when you're connecting two vessels that normally maybe just um, don't, don't naturally connect? It's an anastomosis. Oh, yeah. So technically this would be like an arteriovenosis anastomosis. <laughs> you made that that's one. A lot of no, that's a lot of No, that's too. When would you go through, <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> when would you go through a bypass when this tissue is active or inactive? The blood is saying, nope, I'm not gonna go through there. I'm just gonna go straight into the vein. It's gonna be an inactive tissue, right? Well, why would that happen? It's gonna happen because these structures are what? Vasoconstricting, right? If this is a muscle and you're just sitting down right now, maybe just had a meal, the vessels to your muscles are gonna be all vasoconstricted. Does that make sense? Yeah. If this is constricted, well, if the blood's gonna go through the path of least resistance and that's gonna be through these little channels here, anastomosis. This is happening all the time in you. Blood is selectively going through one area of the body and then another area. Isn't that cool? It's just happening automatically, because that's called what? Auto regulation. regulation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we good on this? Yeah, so the big things there, capillaries, anastomosis, nervi vasorum, vasovasorum, valve, that's a vein, three tunics, that's it, okay? And this is just a random thought, but like, so if you eat a bunch of food and then you go for a run. You're like, I haven't seen this model ever. Well, it, it's been back there. Um, here it is. Okay, what's the big blue? Inferior. Yeah, it's got to be inferior because like we're down to the kidneys and stuff, right? Below the heart. Okay, going to the kidney would be the what? Coming back from the kidney. Okay. And what about this big red? Abdominal. Abdominal. Aorta, the main split towards your legs would be the, and be very, very specific. Okay, so like on the exam, if I said this red guy here on three, one, two, three, what's that? Right gonadal artery. So you have to have, and you can just put R versus L, and then A versus B. Save you some ATPs there. Okay. So, <laughs> and so this is the gonadal vein, right? Right gonadal vein, yes. And remember the weird thing about the left gonadal vein, it drains into the renal left vein. renal vein. Just, it is what it is, okay? Okay, so here are the gonadals. Let's work its way up. I mean, there's one going to this gland. What do you think this is? The left, what? Adrenal. Artery, yeah, versus the left of the vein. Sometimes you can shake it up. Okay, <laughs> adrenal medulla. That's just the middle portion of the adrenal. Yeah. Um, okay, cut stump here, cut stump, and then see these three? They don't have a right and a left. What are the non paired vessels coming off the abdomen? From the top? Superior the trunk? Superior mesenteric artery, inferior mesenteric artery, okay. Celiac trunk, remember, has three branches, left gastric, splenic, common hepatic, right? When would you use the superior mesenteric artery? Going to like the small intestines, right? Which I, I kind of like sometimes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> on which model do you like? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I have you move stuff along. Tracing wise. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> yes. Maybe. <laughs> Alright. 
Okay, and then what's the last unpaired one down here? Yeah, and then what about this one down here? Inferior mesenteric artery. What kind of structures does that go to? Large, 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 large. Yeah, large intestine, like sigmoid, rectum, things like that. Yes? Okay. All right, we said this is the abdominal aorta. And then, what are these paired guys here? It's kind of a hard look, but they would come up like an antenna, and they're going to go right underneath the diaphragm. That's your right, left, phrenic arteries. The old eyes get that off. Are we good on this? Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, Phrenic, <Sprenic>, whatever. <laughs> you know what? Is there a fetal heart back there? Do you see one? It's not on the baby right there in front you know, of you. They're kind of small. Here's the thing. There's always the thing. You guys see how there's a hole? That's already just begging for a number to put on there. <laughs> wow. Just saying. Okay. Um, what structure is the string passing through? It sounds like a station, I just said so. Okay. It's called the foramen ovale. Remember in the skeletal stuff, foramen is a hole, okay? And oval, oval shape, hole, okay? So the foramen ovale, what's the function in the fetal heart? To bypass. bypass the lungs and the fetus, yes. Okay. And bypass the pulmonary fetal circuit, whatever you want to say. Um, when this closes down, anybody remember what it's called? Yeah, there's a chart that shows the side view very well. Let's see if that one has it. You guys see the little oval? Okay. See that oval thing, but it's it's a wall now, yes? So that's called the fossa ovalis. And what's the fossa ovalis do? Yeah, it just separates the atrium now, right? It's now a solid hole. Okay, the other one is you want to find the pulmonary trunk and it's gonna merge with the aorta. See that? See how they kind of blend together right there? So that structure where they come together, and there is a wall there that'll constrict down and close us off with the first breath, they, it starts to contract. It's pretty amazing. We'll talk about it in unit five when you're older, when you're old enough, okay? So what is that structure when they're communicating still? Ductus. Ductus. Arteriosus, because it's found in the fetus. See, it worked. Remember that, okay? And then when it closes off, what is it called? Ligamentum. Ligamentum. Arteriosum. And that's found in? Mum. Mum. No. No. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yes? Same function, right? Same function. Same function for the ductus arteriosus, right? Bypasses the fetal lung. Okay. Well, let's do some heart stuff. And then we'll take a break and we can look at some of this stuff here. Well, we just did this, but in the fetus, right? What's that structure called? Momentum arteriosum. Oh, look at that thing. Ovalis. Vessel, be specific. Pulmonary trunk. trunk. Okay. Vessel, be specific. Right. Right. Uh, artery. Uh, pulmonary artery. Look at where it's going to. Right. Uh, right. Brachiocephalic. <laughs> vein. Versus the left. Left. Brachiocephalic vein. Yes. 
I got this one. <laughs> What's this right here coming into the superior vena cava on the right side? Right, pulmonary. Pulmonary? Artery. Anyone feel good about this one? Yeah. No. Azygous vein. Oh. That was my guess. What? What? But did you put that there? <laughs> like, like with clay or something? <laughs> no. Um, superior vena cava? Inferior, Inferior vena, vena cava. On the back side here, what are the reds coming into the left atrium, guys? Pulmonary veins, right pulmonary veins, left pulmonary veins are no longer. <laughs> Here, okay, okay, and then let's do these branches. You guys have probably been dreaming about these. Mm. This one here, brace ballad, artery, artery, trunk, common carotid. Which one? Left, left, left common carotid, artery. Okay. Right. 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 Artery, right. aortic arch. What's this guy here? This is the front of the heart, so that you guys can grab this later. Left that? pulmonary vein. Left pulmonary artery. Okay. Remember, you got to reverse the colors on the pulmonary circuit, right? Okay. What if I tag just the edge of this guy and said, "Oh, like what feature is that?" Oracle. Left oracle. I mean, if I'm in like the valley, I would say, yeah, maybe the coronary sulcus or the atrioventricular sulcus. Oracle. What about if it's just that edge? Oracle. Oracle. Just like a letter. Uh, the atrium is the chamber. So if I say identify the chamber, we think of one of the four chambers, right? But if it's just this little edge structure, that's the oracle. Like your ear flap is an oracle, right? Okay. What are the ridges called? Pectinate. What are the ridges called in here? Trabeculae. Trabeculae. Yeah, good luck spelling that. <laughs> and what would be. No, that's not jelly. <laughs> what is this structure here? Interventricular septum. septum. What is that structure here? Pulmonary semilunar valve. Pulmonary semilunar pulmonary semilunar valve. When that closes, that produces what? The left. Sound two, S two, or the dub. Okay. What causes that to close? Ventricular relaxation. So it'd be ventricular relaxation. What will cause these valves to close? Yeah, it's when the ventricles are higher contraction. pressure than the atria, right? It's a ventricular contraction. So they produce what sound? S1. S1. What is that art of listening to hear for sounds or heartbeats and stuff like that? It's called auscultation. What do you use for auscultation? Your ossicles. Stethoscope. <laughs> and then what was the fancy name? I've asked this before. Oh my gosh, have I? <laughs> and, you know, students will say, can I just call it whoosh, whoosh? Ready? Big. Low. Anometer. Stethoscope. What are the equipments we use? We use leads. All right, we did leads one through three. Is that right? Is that the other? ECG leads. That last one is still one letter wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, what uh, equations have we learned? What yeah, was the equation for stroke volume? EDV minus What was the equation for MAP? There's two. 
What was the math one that you plug in actual numbers? Two-thirds. Diastole? Plus one third. Plus one third. Sicily. Sicily. Excellent. What was the like the theoretical equation like? M A P equals cardiac output times S V R. There's no number plugging in for that one yet. No, you 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 could. Um, I've done it before. There's actually an equation. It's eight viscosity per divided by radius, but eight is really not good. What was the um, equation for cardiac output? Heart rate and stroke volume. What were the factors that affected SVR? One was it increases it. One decreases it. What was the one that when it goes up, SVR goes down? The dilation of the radius, right? So oh, yeah. radius of a vessel. What's one that when it goes up, SVR goes up? Viscosity was one. Oh, length, vessel length. Blood vessel length. Kind of keep going. What are the things that affected stroke volume? Your preload. Oh. Preload. Preload. Okay. When preload goes up, okay. stroke volume will go up. Give me another one. Contractility rate. Contraction strain. That could be like catecholamines, epi, norepi, calcium availability rate. So that was pretty what. Um, we just call it contractility, right? Yeah. yeah. I like these relationships a lot. So understand, like, when one goes up, the other one goes down. It's just um, thinking. It's physiology. And what's the other one? But it has a negative effect. It causes stroke volume to actually go load. down when it goes up. After load. After load, yeah. Affect preload? How the heart beat is going? Or how fast it's beating? Well, with an increase. Blood volume increase with that. What do you mean? So, like, if a single field node fires faster, faster. you have less time to fill up. So, I feel like that's. All good. right. What are these down here, shaped like a V? Vertebral artery. Vertebral, right and left vertebrals. And then coming up? Basilar. Basilar artery. Remember, there's a basilic in the arm, but that's a vein, right? There's a basilic and a cephalic, yeah? And then what are these back here? Posterior. So remember your vertebrae, they're in the back. So these have to be the posterior cerebrals, yes? Those are the posteriors, and then you got your middle cerebral. Middle cerebrals, and you got your anterior cerebral. Anterior cerebrals, right, right and left. This would be your right and left what? Posterior, posterior communicating. Posterior communicating. And then up here. Anterior. Anterior, anterior communicating. And then blood flow to the front of your brain is right and left what? Internal carotid artery. Uh, right and left internal carotid arteries. They came off the common carotid, right? The external is going more to like the ear and the side of your face, yes? Yes. Uh, I noticed on artery man, uh, there's another one coming out. Is that the superficial temporal? Yeah, it's kind of broken off though from artery man, right? That's where that would be. The superficial temporal is coming off of the external carotid artery. Yeah, so if it kept going, so it'd be like this. 
SS is what? Pure sagittal sinus. Almost like a screen within a screen. <laughs> High dimensions, okay. All right. And in here? Inferior sagittal sinus. Okay, inferior sagittal sinus. What's pointing at you? It's like lower. Great. Great, right? Great cerebral sinus. He said vein. We're going to take it. And then what about this one? Straight. Straight leads to the? Great. Straight to great. Okay, and then right and left what? Transverse. Transverse, and then whoa! Sigmoid. Superior, no. What is it? Sigmoid. Sigmoid sinus. And then drain it down. These are bigger ones. Internal jugs, right? Internal jugular vein. Jugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yeah. And then what's this in the back of your occipital occipital sinus vein? Good enough. And the upper bars superior trosol or petrus? I think petrus too. Inferior petrosol. And the things that look like monkey bars. Cavernous sinus. Is that it? Yep. Not so bad. What if the trolls are just like, where does that like just start there? Where does it start here? Like the drainage process? Like the little cardio? Yeah, like the I mean, if there's some like ear structures, technically, like the inner ear, not the superficial ear. Where's the abdominal wire model? Is that in there? We hit it. <laughs> okay. Recorded some videos. Now, the big red is what? Abdominal. Okay, you always start there, kind of, right? And then the antenna going just beneath the diaphragm, right and left. Phrenic arteries. Okay, and then there's this guy that has three branches coming from it. It's hard angle from where you're at. Celiac. But what are the three branches? You tell me and I'll point. Left gastric, splenic, common, hepatic. Yes? Common to hepatic. Why is it called common? Because it's going to split into? Hepatic. Uh, hepatic, artery or hepatic proper. And then coming down? Gastro, duodenal. Gastro, so remember the gastrics are like an anastomosis, it's a loop, yes? You know, and I'll be on the extreme left or the extreme right. What's the other one that's a loop? Gastro, epiploid. So I'll be on the either extreme left or extreme right, yes? And why is it called gastroduodenal? Because it gives rise to the gastroepiploid, but also the? Duodenal. Isn't that a beauty? Okay, it's a beauty. And then what's coming off the sides here, right and left? Renals. Going to the right and left. Gonadals. So gonadal is like a generic. If it was a guy, I can't tell, okay? Um, <laughs> it'd be testicular. If it was a female, it would be ovarian. Yes, okay. So right and left. Um, gonadal. And then what's this one not paired? Superior mesenteric. Remember when we first saw this, we were like freaking out. And now it's like, ah. <laughs> we got it. Okay. This one is a little harder, I think, because it's not connected. So you have to, you know, make it work. Yeah. Like a dream. Inception. That is so weird. <laughs> All right, ready? No. So, um, which one? 
All right, what's this one right there? Splenic. Splenic artery going to the spleen. Love it. Okay. And then this one here, there's the stump. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. the stump. Left gastric is here. Splenic. And then what's coming off right there? Common hepatic. Common hepatic. The common hepatic artery is going to branch, right? Hepatic. The hepatic artery. artery, and then coming down the gastro. Oh. Good. Okay. okay. Let's just turn this yeah. boy around. It's like a wind vane. Mm. Okay. I don't want that in my yard. All right. Here's the celiac trunk. It's weird. Yes. Yeah. From the back. No. Draining the spleen, that's got to be the splenic. splenic. All right. Thing. Now, here's the thing. The splenic, they should have continued it, but I guess it would block the celiac trunk. It drains into what? What's this big dude right there? The hepatic portal. Hepatic portal vein. Isn't that interesting? Remember, the liver has a double blood supply. Hepatic portal, vein, and then what's the red one again back here? Green. Oh. oh. Uh, the hepatic, hepatic. Uh, artery. Proper. The hepatic proper. Okay. Now. This is the hepatic portal. Splenic drains into it. What else drains into it from the front you could see? All these branches we don't care about. Superior. But what's the blue? Superior, superior mesenteric vein. Vein, so this would make this the superior mesenteric artery. artery. Wow, okay. You guys agree this would be like the duodenal here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because this is the, the duodenum. Which will burn later. Which vein? <coughs> yeah, so here's the superior mesenteric artery. Eventually, though, that drains into the same tube, especially up here. I would tag it all the way up here for the hepatic portal. All the way up there. What goes into the hepatic portal? The, one, the ones we emphasize, remember, where is superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, and then the splenic. Okay. Shall we do charts? Sure. Let's do charts, and then you guys can do some 